to this video. In this video, we're going to be working on the mathematics paper one from the Metro Central District, September 2022. Okay, so let's go on to question one. Okay, so question one, we have been given this equation, P squared, and let me just go ahead and write that. So we've been given P squared plus 48P minus 49 is equal to zero, and we need to solve for P. So we have 1.1.1. This is a quadratic equation, so we can just go ahead and make two brackets equated to zero. And so since we have P squared, we're going to have P and P. And then we need factors of 49 that can give us a 48 in the middle. So if you said 49 and 1, that would work. So if you said 49 minus 1, that would give you a 48. So we can have a positive 49 here and a minus 1. Okay, so we have P is equal to negative 49 or P is equal to 1. Okay, so that's 1.1.1. Those are our solutions. And then they say, hence or otherwise, solve for X if 2 to the power of X plus, okay, let me just go ahead and write that down. So we have 2 to the power of 2X, sorry, plus 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4 plus X and then minus 49 is equal to zero. I want you to also notice now that there is a 49 minus 49 here, and it's also minus 49 there. So there might be a relation there. Okay. Um, another thing is they say hence or otherwise. So our solutions here are probably going to have something to do with the solutions we're going to get here. Okay. So in this exponential equation, Notice there's a repetition of 2 to the power of x. Here we also have 2 to the power of x. Okay, so to better understand this, let's go ahead and split this up. It's not always a good idea to split this because you already have a 2 to the power of x that you can clearly see there. So it's better to split this just to remove the number out. Okay, so we have a 2 to the power of 2x plus a 3 and this is being multiplied by, so now this is 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 2 to the power of x minus 49 equals 0. Okay, so again, there is still a repetition of 2 to the power of x. We can see that clearly now. So this is one of those questions where you have to make a letter be equal to 2 to the power of x. So I'm going to just use k. So I'm going to say let k be equal to 2 to the power of x. So every time we see 2 to the power of x, we're going to replace it with k. So first of all, we have a 2 to the power of x. Look at this. We can either, we can just write it as 2 to the power of x multiplied by 2. So since 2 to the power of x is k, that is going to be a k raised to the power of 2. And then we have plus 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4, which you can see now this whole thing is a number. So we can just go ahead and punch that into the calculator and see what we get. So if you said 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4, Okay, we get 48. So plus a 48. And then we have 2 to the power of x, which we're replacing as k. So 48k. And then we have a minus 49 is equal to 0. Okay, uh, this looks exactly the same as this equation. It's actually the exact same equation. Just here we have k. So we can just open up two brackets again. And instead of P plus 49, we're going to have K plus 49. And then P minus 1, we're going to have K minus 1. Okay, so K is either equal to a negative 49 or K is equal to 1. Okay, it will seem like we're done, but remember this is not a solve for K question. It's a solve for X. So we still have to solve for X. So remember, we said that we were going to let well, I, say th I said that I'm going to let k be equal to 2 to the power of x. And so I'm going to go ahead and replace k with 2 to the power of x. So instead of k, I have 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 49. Or it's 2 to the power of x is equal to 1. 
Okay, so 2 to the power of x being equal to negative 49. Okay, so the thing about this is if you have 2, 2 is a positive number. Whenever you have a positive number and you raise it to anything, it can never give you a negative number. So even if I add 2 to the power of negative 1, it will give me a half. Okay, because the base is positive. And so because of that, this 2 to the power of x can never give you a negative number. So there is no solution here. So that one, 2 to the power of x, just can't be equal to negative 49. And then over here, we have 2 to the power of x equals to 1. This is an exponential equation, so we have to make the bases the same. So we have a 2 to the power of x, and we have to find out 2 to the power of what will give us 1. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so therefore here x is equal to 2. So that is our solution for x. Okay, next one, 1.2.1. 1. Okay, we have a x minus 3 all squared is equal to 3x squared. And then they say leave your answer correct to two decimal places. So the minute they already say that, they're already implying that this is going to become a quadratic equation that you can't factorize. So you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this. Whenever you have a, um, two terms inside a bracket being squared, you can simplify it like this. You first square the first term, so we have x squared. And then you square the last term, which is a negative 3. So we square that, and then we're going to get a positive 9. Then we say the first term, x, multiplied by the second term, which will give us a negative 3x. And then you times that negative 3x by 2. And that gives us a minus 6x. So that's how you can easily solve that. Because it's going to become double of what it was. Of The 3x is always going to double. Okay, so we have that is equal to 3x squared. And then we can just go ahead and take everything over that side. Since we have uh, 3x squared here, it's bigger than x squared. So 0 is equal to... 3x squared minus x squared, and then we have a plus 6x, and then a minus 9. Okay, so 0 is equal to, and that will give us 2x squared plus 6x minus 9. Okay, don't try to factorize this because you saw that they already said correct to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and just use the quadratic formula. Okay, so here's our quadratic formula. Let's just go ahead and substitute everything that needs to be put in. So we're going to have x is equal to our negative b. b is 6, so negative 6 plus minus the square root of our 6 squared minus 4. Also, by the way, whenever this is negative, please make sure you put brackets around it. The calculator will not understand if you just put the negative, like if it was a negative 6. So if it's negative, put brackets. And we have 4, and then A is 2, and then C is negative 9. Okay, over 2, A is 2. So just go ahead and put that all on the calculator. I'm going to try the one with a negative first because it's going to give you the smaller value. Okay, so when I try the one with a negative, I get a negative 4, 0, 9, 8. We need to round off the two decimals, so I'm just taking it as negative 4, 0, 9, 8. Okay, two decimal places, meaning only these two need to remain. Because of that, the 8 will round up and add a 1 to the 9. But then the 9 becomes a 10, and so that 10, that 1, goes over to the 1, to the 0, I mean. And so we're going to have an x is equal to negative 4, comma, 1. But since they said two decimals, you can put it as comma 10. Okay, or x is equal to, and go ahead and just change that to a plus. And now we have a 1, comma, 0, 9, 8, same decimals, so 1, comma, 0, 9, 8. Again, this rounds up, adds a 1 here, that rounds up, adds another 1 here, it goes over. And so we have x is equal to 1, 1, but since they want two decimals, we can just write it as 1, 10. So they, these are our solutions for x. Okay, next question. We have 
1.2.2, we have an inequality, okay? Okay, so x multiplied by x plus 1 is smaller or equal to 4x. Okay, we can go ahead and FOIL this out first. So we have x squared plus x, and then we can take the 4x over. Minus 4x is less than or equal to 0. So x squared and then x minus 4, that is a negative 3x, is smaller or equal to 0. And then we can see that x and x is common. So we can take x out as a common factor. And then x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. And so now we have critical values. We're going to have, it's kind of like saying x is equal to 0. So we have x and 0. Or we have our x minus 3 being smaller or equal to 0. So we have an x and we're taking the negative 3 over and that's a 3. So our critical values are 0 and 3. Okay, so since we have our critical values, you can go ahead and draw a number line. And so we're going to have our critical values 0 and 3. Then we're going to take a number that is less than 0, which is negative 1, and a number that is greater than 0, which is 1. And then we also do the same for 3. We need a number less than 3, which is 2, and a number greater than 3, which is 4. Okay, so this is kind of like the grade 11 way of doing this. When we are solving for these inequalities, the first thing we do is we look at the critical values. Because this inequality tells us smaller or equal to zero, we're going to have to first find out if we actually take this and substitute this into our inequality. Does it really, really give us an answer that is equal to zero? So let's go ahead and try that. So if you take zero and you put that in minus three, zero look at what we get that still stays a zero anything times zero is zero so minus zero which still gives you a zero and since it gives you a zero it's actually equal to zero we can go ahead and say that x is equal to zero it actually does work for this it gives us a value of zero when we substitute it in we can also try that for three so substitute three in three squared minus three multiplied by three 3 squared is 9, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and so 9 minus 9 is 0. So when we substitute 3, it really does give us a value of 0. It really is equal to 0. And so we can also go ahead and say x is equal to 3 as well, because it gives us a value of 0. Okay, another thing about the equal to on the number line is on your critical values, you have circles. If the inequalities, if these values are not equal to the critical values, for example, if we didn't have this line down here, we would leave the circle open. But since x really is equal to 0, we will have a closed circle. And then here, x is equal to 3, so we can also have a closed circle here. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and find out where these signs are going. So remember, we're trying to find values that are less than zero. We've already spoken about the equal to zero. So this is just a trial and error thing. This is the normal grade 11 way to do this question. And so we can go ahead and substitute negative one into this, but I'm just going to use the calculator this time. So we're going to have negative one all squared minus three multiplied by negative one. And then let's see what we get. We get a four. Unfortunately, 4 is not smaller than 0. It's greater than 0. And so this does not work. Okay, let's try 1. So if you've substituted a 1, so 1 instead, we get negative 2, which really is less than 0. Okay, so this value works. Values that are greater than 0 work. And so we're saying that x is greater than 0. Another easy um, thing about this as well is the fact that the arrow actually tells you how your inequality sign is going to look. Okay, then let's work with the 3 now. We have, we have these values next to the 3, a 2, and a 4. So if you try the 4, I know it's not going to work, but if you try the 4, look at what it would give you. Okay, it would give you a 4. And 4 is greater than 0, not less than 0. So we cannot take 4. We have to take something that gives us a value that is less than 0. 
Okay, so we can try 2. So if you substitute a 2 instead, this is what we're going to get. We get negative 2, and negative 2 is less than 0. And so our values that work are moving this way towards the 2. So values that are less than 3. Again, so we're saying x is less than 3. So it just follows the inequality sign. It's smaller than 3. It also just follows that. Okay. So we've actually solved for them. But then there's one more thing. Notice that these values are pointing towards each other. So it means they're speaking about the same set of values. And since they're speaking about the same set of values, you can write them together. So this is how we're going to write them together. Let me just remove those. We're going to say, therefore, x in the middle. And then we're going to put the smaller number here. And then the, sorry, our smaller critical value was the 0, not the negative 1. It's a 0. And then the bigger number, which is 3. And so we're saying that x is greater than 0, but smaller than 3. So x is bigger than 0. Another way to just see it is look at what your inequalities were already saying. They were saying that x was greater than 0. So when you have x versus the 0, let the inequality face the x. So greater or equal to 0. And then when we have x versus your inequality, let the inequality sign face the 3. But smaller than or equal to 3. So there we go. These are, this is our solution for x for that inequality. Okay, 1.3, they say, we have to, without the use of a calculator, evaluate the following expression. So we need to simplify this expression without the use of a calculator. Okay, so one thing about this expression that I'm seeing here is, first of all, they both have square roots and they're being multiplied by each other there's a rule that states that if you have a square root of something multiplied by the square root of another thing you can put them under the same radical since they're both square roots you can put it as the square root of two multiplied by three so that's what we're going to do for this we're going to go ahead and put a big square root and say x times two minus square root 7 over 2 is being multiplied by x times 2 plus square root 7 over, oh, sorry, I wrote 2, 7 over 2. Okay. Okay, so this is what we have. And let's go ahead and simplify this. So what we have is one term being multiplied by another term. So normally already the x and the x will just multiply to each other. And they will give us an x squared. So we just have the square root of. Okay. Another easy way of seeing this is that they're just being multiplied to each other. So it's like picking this one up and just multiplying it to that one. So the x and the x would multiply. And then that and that would multiply together. Okay. So we're just going to have our x times x, which is x squared. Okay. x squared. And then our 2 minus square root of 2, okay, multiply by this. Now, I want you to notice that we have the exact same first term and last term in these two brackets. But then we have a minus and a plus. It's like you have x minus 4 and then x plus 4. When you have something like this, you can see that this is difference of two squares. And so we're going to have an x squared and then a 4 multiplied by 4, which is 16. Then we will just have a minus in the middle. That is difference of two squares. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. We're going to have, okay, multiplied by, so instead of just the 2, the 2 times 2 gives you a 4. And then we have our last terms multiplying. So let's multiply these last terms. We have a square root of 7 multiplied by square root 7. Square root 7 times square root 7 will just give you a 7 because the square root will cancel. What actually happens is like you have a square root 7 times square root 7. And so this becomes a square root 7 all squared since it is the same number being multiplied twice. And so the square root and the square cancel each other. 
and so it just becomes a 7. So we have a 7 over 2 multiplied by 2, which gives you a 4. Okay, and then you have your plus and your minus, which just becomes a minus because this is different of two squares, just like the way this one worked. Okay, so that's what we have there. So let's just go ahead and simplify this. So we just still have the square root of and x squared. Then we have these. Also notice these two are numbers. Since they're both numbers, they can just be simplified. So find out what is 4 minus the 7 over 4. Okay, so if we said 4 minus 7 over 4, we get 2 comma 25, but I want that as a fraction. So 9 over 4, that's what we get. So we just still have our x squared here. Okay, we have our x squared, and then we have multiplied by 9 over 4, which is just the same thing as the square root of 9 over 4 x squared. Okay, they've been square rooted. So what is the square root of 9? Notice that all of these are perfect squares. Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. So this is our final answer. This is a simplified version of that. Okay, and then 1.4, we have a simultaneous equation. Okay, so this is our simultaneous equation. We have 2y minus x equals 2 and 1 over y minus 3x equals 1. Okay, so we can go ahead and call this equation 1 and that can be equation 2. Then we can form equation 3 because we have x sitting on its own here. So we can just take x over so that it can become positive. So we will have a positive x is equal to, we still have our 2y here. And then we can bring the 2 over, so minus 2. Okay, so that is equation 3. Then we can substitute our equation 3 into equation 2. Okay, so wherever you see x, just replace it with 2y minus 2. So we're going to just have a 1 over y minus 3, and then we have x, so open bracket 2y minus 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so we still just have, let's go ahead and simplify that, 1 over y, foil this out. So that gives you a minus 6y, and then negative 3 times negative 2, that's positive 6, is equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put the numbers together, because that looks simpler. So 1 over y minus 6 of um, y is equal to 1 minus 6, and 1 minus 6 gives you a negative 5. Okay, now uh, there is a bit of a problem here, this y on the denominator. It is a problem and stopping us from solving for y. So what we can do is just multiply both sides by y to get rid of that y. So multiply both sides by y. And then this is what we're going to have. We're going to have this being multiplied. But remember the y and the y would cancel there. And so we would just have a 1. And then the y multiplied by negative 6y, which will give you a negative 6y squared is equal to our negative 5y. Okay, since we have negative 6y here, we can just take that and take everything over that side so that the 6y squared can be positive. So we have 0 is equal to 6y squared minus 5y and then minus 1. Okay, so this is just a trinomial which we have to factorize. So we're going to think about 6y and think about factors of 6y. Okay, since we have a 5 in the middle, I'm just going to go ahead and say 6y and y. Okay, so 6y times y gives us 6y squared. And then factors of 1. So that is going to be 1 and 1. Okay, and since the middle is negative, I'm going to make the bigger factor, well, because we're going to say 6y multiplied by 1. This is just another method of factorizing. As long as you use your method and it works, then it's fine. So we have a minus here. So I'm going to say 6y multiplied by negative 1. That gives you a negative 6y. And then a y. And I'm going to put a plus here instead. So y times positive 1. That is a positive y. And that gives you a negative 5y in the middle. So these are our factors. So this is just called the cross method. 
And as long as you just take the factors of the first term and factors of the last term, and when you cross multiply them, they should give you. So when you cross and then find that, so just six times one and the y times one, they should give you the middle term. Then you know your factors are correct. So our factors are six y plus one and y minus one. Okay, so these are the factors. And so we can just go ahead and simplify and solve for y. So we have 6y plus 1 is equal to 0, or we have our y minus 1 equals 0. So 6y is equal to negative 1, divide both sides by 6. And so y is equal to negative 1 over 6. And then here, y is just equal to 1. Okay, so here we have solved for y. And this would actually just be our fourth equation. Lastly, in order to solve for x, we're going to substitute this fourth equation into this third equation, which starts with x. So we're going to go ahead and say substitute equation 4 into 3. Okay, so we're going to say x is equal to, and we had x is equal to 2y minus 2. So 2y minus 2. Okay, so in place of y, so x is equal to 2 bracket negative 1 over 6 minus 2. x is equal to, I'm just going to punch that into the calculator. 2 bracket negative 1 over 6 multiplied by, I mean, minus 2. That gives you a negative 7 over 3. So negative 7 over 3. Or here we have a x is equal to 2 bracket 1 minus 2. So x is equal to 2 minus 2, which just gives you 0. So, or x is equal to 0. Okay, so those are our solutions for y and x. Okay, so that was the simultaneous equation part, and now we have to move on to 1.5. So, question 1.5.1 We are told that okay so we're given that f of x is equal to 3 multiplied by x minus 1 all squared plus 5 and g of x is equal to 3 okay so is it possible for f of x to be equal to g of x give a reason for your answer okay so the best way to find out if f of x can really be equal to g of x is to actually equate them so let's take f of x and equate it to g of x and see what happens so we have 3 x minus 1 all squared plus 5 is equal to 3. Okay, um, I'm going to leave the x minus 1 all squared on its own. And I'm going to take the 5 over. So leave this as it is with a 3 in front. So 3, we have x minus 1 all squared is equal to, and we'll have a 3 minus 5, which will give us a negative 2. We can also go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And now we'll have x minus 1 all squared is equal to negative 2 over 3. Okay, so from here already, there's a bit of a problem here. Whenever you square anything, it will give you a positive number. Here we have that this is equal to a negative number. If you try to square root both sides, it would be undefined. You can't square root both sides in this case because x minus 1 all squared will always be greater than 0. And so this x minus 1 all squared cannot be equal to negative 2 over 3. So in this case, x will have no real solution, has no real solution. And so because of this, g of x cannot be equal to f of x. So we can say therefore f of x is not equal to to g of x okay so that's one way of solving it another way is to actually from here you can actually try to simplify this a bit more so we could have had so i'm just going to say all we could have said x minus one that's a minus minus one all squared is equal to negative two over three and then we can try and simplify this so we'll have x squared and then we say x times negative 1, which is negative x, multiplied by 2, which is negative 2x. And then we have a negative 1 squared, which is plus 1. Then we can take this negative 2 over 3 over, becomes a plus 2 over 3, is equal to 0. And then we have x squared minus 2x, and then 1 plus 2 over 3 
that gives you a positive 5 over 3 is equal to 0. Okay, now that we have this, if you try to solve for x using even the quadratic formula, you would find out that your calculator would say error, math error. This is because we don't have any real solutions for this. And how you could show them that there are no real solutions is by finding delta. So remember, delta is b squared minus 4ac. So let's find out what delta is. b is negative 2. So negative 2 squared minus 4 multiplied by 1, which is a. And c is 5 over 3. So I'm going to just put that all into the calculator. We have negative 2 all squared minus our 4 and then multiply by 1, multiply by 5 over 3. Okay, so as you can see already, the calculator is giving us a negative 8 over 3. We're having a negative solution for delta. Whenever delta gives you a number smaller than 0, this gives you no real solutions. There are no real solutions for this equation. So it just means that this line y is equal to 3, g of x equals 3, and this parabola, they don't intersect. So they don't have any points of intersection. And so because of that, we know that f of x cannot be equal to g of x. Okay, so that was 1.5.1. And now we go on to 1.5.2. Okay, question 1.5.2. We have determined the values of k for which f of x is equal to g of x plus k has two unequal roots. Okay, so we have to equate those equations and put a plus k and find out where the roots are unequal. We get two unequal roots. Okay, so this is what we have. We're going to have f of x, which is a 3 multiplied by x minus 1 all squared plus 5 is equal to 3. And then we have plus k. And then we're going to have plus k. Okay, so let's simplify this. We're going to have 3 and then open bracket. This can become x squared and then it will have a negative 2x in the middle plus 1. Remember, we have actually solved this before. Then we have a plus 5. The 3 comes over, becomes a minus 3. The k comes over, becomes a minus k is equal to 0. Okay, we can go ahead and FOIL this part out. And so we'll have 3x squared minus 6x and plus 3. And then outside the bracket, we have a 5 minus 3, which gives us a positive 2 minus k equals 0. Okay, and then we're going to have 3x squared, and then we have a minus 6x, and then 5, I mean, <laughs> that's going to be a 5, yes. 3 plus 2 gives you a positive 5 minus k equals 0. Okay, so remember, what they're asking for is for us to determine the values of k for which this will have two unequal roots. So this has to do with delta. So when delta, right, which is b squared minus 4ac, when delta is equal to 0, then you're going to have equal roots. Okay, the roots will be real, but they're going to be equal. They are asking for unequal. When delta is greater than 0, then you're going to have two real and unequal roots. So this is what we're looking for where delta is greater than 0. So our b squared minus 4ac, which is delta, needs to be greater than 0. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that to this equation. So we have b squared, and b squared in this equation is negative 6. So we're taking negative 6, we're going to square that, and that we have minus 4, and then our a is a 3. So 3, and then multiply by c. And in this case, our c is this 5 minus k. k is also going to be considered as a constant. So we're going to have 5 minus k equals to 0. Okay, not equal to 0, sorry, greater than 0. Because we want unequal roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for this inequality. 
we have negative 6 squared, which will give you that is 6. And then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And it's multiplied by 5 minus k being greater than 0. Then we have that is 6. And then we have negative 12 multiplied by 5, which is negative 60. And then negative 12 multiplied by negative k, which is positive 12k, is greater than 0. Okay. If you say 36 minus 60, you get a negative 24. So negative 24 plus 12k is greater than 0. And 12k is greater than can take negative 24 over becomes positive and then divide both sides by 12 and so therefore k just has to be greater than 24 divided by 12 is 2 k just has to be greater than 2 in order for you to have two unequal roots okay and that is the end of question one i will see you in the next video in question two